Uh, life gets ill, homie, we got bills. More than one kid, a boss we could kill. Aches and pains all Hey, everybody, it is Podcast LG once again. Thank you so much for joining us. And to my right, I've got Catherine Summers, my co host and partner in crime, who is the executive director at the Chamber of Commerce here in Los Gatos. Do you want to say hello? Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Um, thanks for being here. And today we've got a huge topic. We have so much to talk about. W- today we're talking about, and I thought about over and over and over again, like how do we like rein this in just a little bit? But really we're talking about housing, okay? We're talking about housing in Los Gatos. And as I've been doing a deep dive on this, I've, I'm realizing that that is a massive subject that has layers after layers after layers, speaking of Shrek. Um, <laughs> it's like an onion. You have, and so uh, I, I know we're going to get into some of it today, but not all of it. And I know you have a lot to say about this subject. And uh, over here, we've got Rob Moore. Rob, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us kind of who you are and how you fit in and why you're here? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Los Gatos. I'm on the Housing Element Advisory Board. I was on the board of the Chamber of Commerce up until recently. Um, and I'm also a candidate for town council in Los Gatos. And you're also young. And I am young. Yeah, I am I'm young. young yes. I don't think we're supposed to ask that. I think that's illegal. <laughs> uh, and then we have Kylie Clark. Will you please tell us who you are? Of course. So I'm Kylie Clark. I'm the public policy coordinator at West Valley Community Services. So I do policy work on housing. And I'm a resident of Los Gatos. I'm also a planning commissioner, but I'm not speaking today in that capacity. Um, tell me, say this, say where you work again one more time, please. West Valley Community Services. Okay, and what's your title there? Public Policy Coordinator. Okay, great. Yeah. Excellent. And, and we also us- both rent in town, which I think is an important, uh, important thing as well. Great. And tell us just real quickly, um, you guys uh, chose to move back here after college. Mm-hmm. And so in college, you both went to Cal Poly, mm-hmm. and you were really involved in student government there. Yes, correct. Involved in, in a number of things, um, but Los Gatos has always been my home, and, and I had always planned to move back to the Bay Area, and, and I thought, no better place than Los Gatos. I love this town. Yeah. yeah. After graduating, I went to Marin, and then Rob and I wanted to live together, and he's required to live in Los Gatos to <laughs> run for town council, so yeah. I came down yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, funny that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, so... Uh, I, I, I might, so I, this, this is a big topic, right? And, it is. and we talked a lot about it. And so one of the things that I wanted to start off with is, if I can get your guys' opinions, what, it, what, what are the housing issues in Los Gatos? And I'm just kind of backing this all the way up because sometimes I think y'all exist in sort of a echo chamber where you all know the, uh, the subjects already. And I think that there are people who maybe don't know everything they want to know. And so I want to back it up kind of elementally here to see what you guys think are the major issues, if we can kind of break that down. Is that mm-hmm. okay? Yeah, well, so speaking of elementally, I would say one of the biggest housing issues right now is the housing element because it's a process happening in our community that happens every eight years. And right now it's happening in every city in California, including Los Gatos. And so we're required to build a certain number of homes, which I think is a big part of what's spurred these different housing conversations. And then things that are aligned with that would definitely be transportation. I think affordable housing might be the biggest topic right now, especially with our homelessness crisis. And then I'm sure Rob has a few more to share. The first one was was house, the housing element. Yeah. Um, again, you, you talk about that like it's a little <laughs> bit of jargon to me. So, mm-hmm. uh, And I know what it is, but I want to explain it. Like, what is the housing element? Mm-hmm. So it is one of nine elements of a city's general plan and is the only one that is required to be approved by the state. And so the town has to go through a process, and Rob has something to say. No, just to say a general plan. <laughs> just a, a general plan being the town's constitution, to even take it, because I think that's a, a yeah. unclear that, term as well. Yeah, a, That a town does every um, 10 or 20 years. We just happen here in Los Gatos that we do it every 20 years, and we always have done that. So I actually believe, or you might know this, but I think we do it every 10 years, actually, but it's a 20-year plan. So we're looking out 20 years in the future, but we do it every 10 years. Um, And then the housing element, interestingly, is every eight years because that's mandated by the state. And so they're not always uh, synced up. This time they happen to be a little bit more synced up, but they don't have to. So housing element, transportation, and what was the third one? Affordable housing. And affordable housing. As you might imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we got that, right? Yeah. 
Um, Rob, anything you want to add to that? I think I would just say like balancing the needs and interests of the community, right? Because there are folks that, that are very interested in some of these like affordable and transportation issues and these sorts of things. And then there's also folks that have lived here their whole life who are really concerned with mitigating growth and keeping Los Gatos the way it, it is. Mm-hmm. Is it possible to do that? No. Yeah. That's really okay. So that's interesting. I mean, plain and simple. I, I, I think he's right. I, I mm-hmm. think that it's impossible to 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 push, try and push the tide back. There's too many damn people here in California. And, and I think fundamentally, and this is what Kylie's talking about, the state has told us we have to build 2000 housing units. And so dragging our feet is not going to the state has told us we have to build how many 2000 it, by when um, it, over the, this eight year period. OK, so 2000 um, more units. And those are uh, rentals, uh, single families, condos, a combination of all? Yeah, so um, it, it, yeah, it's a variety of different housing types. It's actually, um, the way it's disaggregated is by affordability level. So there's market rate housing and then a variety of um, below market rate housing. Okay. Yeah. And you're working on the committee to help basically suss this out, right? I mean, that's what you, the committee that you're volunteering for here in town. Yeah, the Planning Commission just finished our review of the general plan after many, many late night meetings, and we sent that on to the town council, so they'll be reviewing it next. So I heard about this, and I know we're going to wind up going in a bunch of different directions, and, and I'm, I'm going to stop talking so you can start talking here soon. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> But the, the y- y'all just finished reviewing the general plan mm-hmm. and sent it to the council because mm-hmm. we went and talked to the Los Gatos Community Alliance mm-hmm. and they didn't want to come talk to us hmm. because they're waiting for the general plan to be revealed so that they can understand what's in it in order to have a conversation with us here at Podcats. Mm, okay. Can you tell me why they're waiting? So I would say that... I think largely the only thing that changed substantially would be the housing numbers when the Planning Commission looked at the general plan. And so their concerns, I'm sure, were related to housing. And there's an element in the general plan called the land use element. Yep. And that's where all of that happened. And so I would assume that that's kind of the reasoning behind it is waiting to see what happens with those numbers, because that's still subject to change within town council as well. Yeah, town council will have the ultimate vote on what passes in terms of land use and in the number of housing units that will be in the 2040 general plan. But I actually want to go back um, really to more, I think, of the affordable housing or the need for housing in Los Gatos in general. Because what does that housing look like? You know, and you said, you know, we do have a lot of uh, maybe folks in the community who've lived here forever and they really would like to see this charming little, you know, gem of a town stay exactly as it is and you say you don't think that's possible so there has to be some whatever uh compromise in there somewhere and what does that compromise look like i mean do we really have to build affordable housing here and if so why yeah so i want to first say that i really think that while we do have to build housing and while the town will change i don't think that's going to compromise the charming and lovely character of our town i think that that a big part of our character, if we think about what is the character of Los Gatos, I think it's about the people. And the chamber did a, a whole event about this, and it really it was fundamentally about the people that live in Los Gatos. And for there to continue to be the people to live in Los Gatos who have historically lived in Los Gatos, a variety of different people with different opinions and all of these things, you have to build different housing types, a variety of housing types. So uh, Kylie and I live in a fourplex, which is not affordable in terms of how the state defines affordability, but it is cheaper. Um, I'm comfortable sharing, I hope you are too, that we pay $2,400 a month and we split it. So we each pay $1,200 a month. One bedroom, two bedroom? Two, two bedroom. bedroom. Okay. Two bedroom with a big in, backyard. In Los Gatos, in the, in the city limits. In Los Gatos. And the reason that that housing is affordable is because it's a fourplex and it's been here for a long time. Um, and so that th- our unit was built in the 50s or 60s. And so it's not the very nicest, most modern thing, but we love it and it works. And it allows us to have the luxury of moving back here. Whereas if we don't build that housing, if we continue to tear down fourplexes and tear down um, small 
you know, $1 million homes to build three and $4 million McMansions, the only people who will be able to afford to live here are very, very wealthy people. Because to buy a $4 million house, you have to be very wealthy. And that isn't the history of Los Gatos. And I don't think that's the character of Los Gatos. Many people that live in our community now that own a home couldn't afford to buy the home they live in today. And that's a, an interesting place that it, are put, it puts our town in uh, because I do think that it affects the kinds of people who are going to be able to move here in the future. So when you hear affordable housing, when, when you hear it, and I know other people interpret it a different way, in fact, some people with whom I've talked in the community, they think affordable housing, you're going to build a five-story tenement down on Los Gatos Boulevard. But that's not at all what you what would happen if we actually approved some of this housing, right? No, no, I, I don't think we I don't think Los Gatos is ever going to build tenements. I don't think. <laughs> well, not, is, you know, I don't no, mean, no. I don't even mean tenement, but I think there's a there there is an overall worry that and I think that's why people can't really grasp it when you say affordable housing mm -hmm. or below market rate housing they people think people equate it with poverty they do mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and so how do you switch that um you know uh image or how do you yeah the definition of affordable housing is housing that somebody can afford to live in while still affording to cover their other needs such as food and clothing and electricity and all of those sorts of things is there an equation for that I mean, that it's you plug totally in numbers? It totally varies by person, but it pretty much is they're paying their rent and then they can still cover those other costs with some form of a buffer. So but at that West Valley... That must break out in percentages. Yeah, I think it probably does. It, at West Valley Community Services, a lot of our clients are paying 80% of their income on rent. And so when that 80%. happens... 80%? Yeah. How, is and that you the majority think, of people you work with or is that sort of a slim minority of people that you work with? I would say it's a decent amount, but it is in the minority, and okay. then a lot are paying 50% 50 or more. 50% is yeah. perfectly normal. Yeah. I mean, around here. Yeah. 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 All right, big question, image question, um, or to picture it. Are you then, since you are young advocates of affordable housing and of passing this general plan with perhaps 3,000 plus units in it, um, let's just take the manor, for example, you know, and all of these people have, um, this is the Blossom Hill Manor. The Blossom Hill Manor. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, uh, I want to say thank you so much for tuning into podcasts. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen or watch. I'm down here at the Hardcore Barber in Los Gatos. And uh, just want to take a second to give a shout out to our sponsors and our supporters. First of all, I want to say thank you to KCAT uh, for having us down, for recording the show, for helping us with all the technical stuff. KCAT has been absolutely amazing. Secondly, I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber of Commerce has been a huge supporter. They've also sponsored the show. And so we want to just tell you that they're doing an amazing job. If you're not involved with the Chamber, you should be. Thirdly, I want to say thank you to Brian and Dan Real Estate. Brian and Dan, Silicon Valley Real Estate. Dan has been a huge fan of podcasts, and uh, we're also sponsoring the show. And lastly, then, the brokerage that we work for, which is Christie's International Real Estate Sereno formerly known as Sereno Group, has been a massive sponsor. Everybody should be using Sereno. Christie's International Sereno, the best brokerage here in Los Gatos, bar none. Thank you again for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And uh, now we're going to get you back to the show. We live quite close to there. And families have scrimped and saved for a lot of years. And so they bought these single family residences that they really, really love now. Are we suggesting in this general plan that both of the neighbors to one house could actually tear down their property now and build a fourplex? No, so that's so the general so an interesting piece of state law is this bill called SB9 which allows for anyone by right to turn their home into a duplex. You can build two units out of a home that was originally one unit. Regardless of the size of the lot, if you want to build There's some units, restrictions, okay. but but in general in Los Gatos you could do that with your with your single family house. Okay. Um this general plan uh, uses something called community place districts. Sorry, yeah. I just want to space this mm -hmm. out. The the what you just talked about SB9 is a state law is a state that was law. passed and that is in in effect right now. And that Los Gatos has no and and the Los Gatos general plan is going to be an overlay on top of that law. Vice versa. Um, Vice versa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to separate these things out. One yeah, it's is a separate one is a, piece that, that we have no control over. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 
The Los Gatos general plan in its current form has these things called community place districts. And what the community place districts say is we want to build how we want to prioritize building housing here, here, here and here. Um, there's I, I forget how many of them, but there's about 10 or 12 or so. Um, they are primarily in old shopping centers. Um, and they're places where we're saying we're going to build dense housing. The Los Gatos general plan does not prioritize building fourplexes in single family neighborhoods. Um, you can talk, I don't I actually don't know if you could build a, sing, a fourplex in a single family neighborhood under the current form, but that's not the priority because we have to get 2000 housing units built and you don't do that through piecemealing fourplexes throughout single family neighborhoods. Um, you do that through building projects. And that's interesting because that is one of the fears that I hear over and over again on a day daily basis is, oh my gosh, we're going to ruin our single family neighborhoods. So you're just dispelling that. But, yeah. but, but those people should then be somehow fighting against people moving to California. Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, they might be. 40 yeah. years ago, I don't know, uh, and whatever. David, maybe you can look this up. What the population was when I was in high school is half of what the population is today. I mean, those people can't move here and not live someplace yeah i mean this is what we're up against and i know los gatos wants to and i love you los gatos don't get me wrong i i, I want the, the character of the of the town to remain the same too i care a lot about the character but of the i town. go back to the character of the town i mean it, I th the world has changed i mean gosh looks what's well, happened in the last couple of days you know in town it's it's every it's changing so f rapidly it's like don't we want to be part of that that change and or I don't know, be the difference, I mean, you know, or, or kind of be a steward to making the America a better place. I mean, I think, but that's what we get a lot of pushback for, or I get pushback, is that people will say, well, what's going to happen if all of a sudden we allow everyone into Los Gatos? What does that even mean? I mean, everyone into Los Gatos? Who is everyone? Oh, we're going to have maybe a few more people of color in town? I hope so. And we're going to have people that maybe don't make as much money as you know, as uh, whatever the more than half the population here, and we're going to have people that have to have find public transportation to get to work. And is that so bad, or does that just kind of whatever? It makes a really good mix. Yeah, and yeah. I'm the only person I know in the nonprofit world who lives in Los Gatos, and that's pretty <laughs> telling. And I think that we want nonprofit employees right. to live in our town, and we do want to be around diversity. There's something really valuable in that, and I think that a decent amount of people can agree about yeah. that, and that it's better for their kids in this changing world to grow up in a more diverse mm -hmm. environment. And I think going back to what Rob said is really, as much as it's about bringing people into the town, I think it's about letting people stay as these really wealthy people do come into the town. And so letting mm -hmm. high school students be able to move back here after college and letting seniors be able to afford to live in the town once mm -hmm. they stop making a steady income. Because I think most people in town would want their their parents who are getting to the later years of their life or their younger children to be able to move here, you know, and be able to stay here. Uh, but right now, because it's so unaffordable, that is not that's mm -hmm. not the reality. And it's interesting that you said it wasn't always like this. You know, in fact, I was talking to some of my colleagues at my office who said when they bought here and they've been here a lot longer than I have, that they did buy a house at eight hundred thousand dollars and they were mm -hmm. able to afford it and you mentioned this earlier they wouldn't be able to come and live here now i mean it's very few people mm -hmm. that could move straight here yeah mm -hmm. so how do you start building that i mean in a way that community back right mm -hmm. i mean yeah. for a community to thrive you need a little bit of everything mm -hmm. yeah. population of california in 1986 was 27 million mm. i think we're at 40 million now would mm -hmm. you guys agree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that i don't think people stop showing up here right I mean, they're not not coming. Yeah. Say that so, number again. So, 27 million in 1986. This is when I graduated from high school. Okay. And now it's, I guess it's around 40 million, mm -hmm. David. If you want to give me that yeah. number too. 40 million. Right. Um, I think 40 million, mm -hmm. 39 million, 40 mm -hmm. million, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a that's a, a significant increase in population, and the places they want to live are, essentially, I mean, here, right, Los Angeles, and I guess maybe you know Sacramento, Central Valley, -ish. 39 million, almost almost 40 here mm -hmm. now. Wow. Yeah. So this begs the next question, and, and uh, we've got about 10 more minutes left, just so you know. Um, and this is maybe a bigger question than just housing, but what about city services when, when we increase housing stock by another 2,000 units? What about schools? What about traffic? What about parking? 
What about all the things that come along with that thing that is not just snobby, I want Los Gatos to be charming, but I don't want to take 40 minutes to drive from one side of town to the other. I want to be able to go out and park. I want to be able to go to a restaurant and not wait for an hour. I want to be able to turn on my tap and have water come out of it. I mean, what about all that? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at Rob. He's going to have the answers. He's going to know. know. <laughs> I think though I think those are more legitimate concerns than we don't want anybody in the town, you know, period. So I think that this is where we do need to talk about how this is going to look and how we're actually going to create policies that that make this work. Uh, we've seen developers in town be really good, you know, in some ways be really good players and be good actors with the town. So the uh, the folks who developed the North 40 spent 12 million dollars on Lark Avenue when they did not have to, to improve that for, uh, improve the car and bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. I just um, heard everybody uh, yeah. let out a, a, a collective groan I about know. Lark <laughs> Avenue <laughs> yeah. and that $12 million that's clogging up their oh lives right now. But it's and, not done. It's not done it's yet. Not, but, yeah. <laughs> I know everybody in town right now is like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's, hard, it's hard to see the light at the end of that rainbow, yeah. honestly. And, and that is real. And, and so there's this concept in urban planning called induced demand. And it's often, uh, it doesn't matter. Induced demand. Induced demand. And so that says, if we have a lot of traffic and we have a lot of need in these areas, we, we are inducing demand for more services. So we're going to either see people getting off out of their cars into their bicycles, which is a good thing to do. A big goal of the town in general is to decrease vehicle miles traveled. So that's good to have people. That's get, in the general plan. Is that part of the? Mm, I mean, and, I, and I think it's, I think it's been in the oh, general okay. plan for it's a long time. It's been working time. pretty yeah. well so far. <laughs> I'm glad it's um, in there because it, it's really yet. had a major impact on the, how this town works. <laughs> but I think you do see more people using bicycles, right? And, what, and is there any incentive to ride a bike? Is that does the town say we'll give you a candy bar at the end of your journey, or we'll let you get out of traffic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I would but, say like there is a lot of environmental motivation, mm -hmm. and really the like incentive to buy a bike is just it being safe to ride a bike. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it's scary. Uh, yeah. And I got to say, actually, there is been there has been money spent on the bike lanes, which oh, I know some yeah. people complain about because of the aesthetic but there has been yeah. energy put into making it more accessible on a bike yeah mm -hmm. i interrupted you about three times if you can continue <laughs> that thought not a worry at all no and so then you talk about things like uh buses right so you have more people that are using these streets right now we actually have very little ridership in los gatos yeah. and the more we create ridership the more buses we're going to be able to have and the better it's going to, to be you can look at a you know 50 cars on the road can fit, the people in those 50 cars can fit into one bus. And what a beautiful thing that is. Um, and then you think about something like parking. If we need, so right now, Los Gatos and many municipalities have really stringent parking minimums and so, or, or parking space minimums. And so you, when you build developments, you might have to build two parking spaces for every person. And that makes it really expensive to build that housing because parking is very expensive. $30,000 per parking space on oh, average. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Which is $30,000 per, per parking space. Yeah. Space. Yep, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so when you build these denser, you know, more mixed use developments, um, like I think we're going to see with the North 40 right now, it's mostly just condos that are kind of like denser single family homes. But when you build apartments and things like that, you have services on the bottom and uh, residential on the top. And so you can have folks walking to the grocery store, walking to get, you know, walking to go to Ace Hardware, walking to go wherever, instead of needing to have a car. In, in there's lots of places around the country where people don't own cars. And, yeah. and we happen to live in a town where most people own a car, but you don't have to. Lots of students ride their bikes and walk to the high school and all those sorts of things. So Right. This is a California problem, mm -hmm. yeah. largely, right? You go to other major metropolitan areas in the country and they have, they have buses, they have buses, subways. subways. Yeah. Well, and tall buildings that allow them to stack up on top of each other. Um, okay, because I know we only have five minutes left, so seven. So, what, seven. What I really wanted to get to, though. So you and I were young once. We were like no 20, way. 23. <laughs> 20, no, no way. <laughs> but um, so I love your, I guess it's idealism, right? And your dreams for the future. And somebody has to have those, right, at this mm -hmm. point. But um, do you really think that this is possible? Or do you sometimes, like, lose that hope? Or, like, I mean, do you think, like, Los Gatos is a town where you actually might be able to make a change and people will understand what you are envisioning to 
Can I jump in there for just one second? And I don't want to answer. I want to hear your answer. But I think part of the equation that's hard to understand, uh, w w when I was about to have, or no, I had kids and friends of mine were about to have kids. And they'd be like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to have kids? I don't know how to do that. Y I would tell them, when the kid is born, you become a completely different person. This is maybe a weird story, but you just, you change, right? And so I think what's happening here is, is that these, this generation is going to come along and they're all going to change along with this. They're all going to be adopting this kind of attitude or, or already have adopted this attitude. But they've got one major and hurdle. What they're, what they're, they've got us. They've us. Got, <laughs> yeah, we're the, Honestly. Yeah. Right. And they've got the whole rest of the town of Los Gatos. And I really, not the whole rest of the town, there's, but they have, they've got some big, um, uh, uh, you mean opponents, big? right? Mm -hmm. To what they're trying to do, and some of the and I. Who are your opponents? And I do want to push back on that just a little bit because I think that a lot of folks, even the Los Gatos Community Alliance, who I think are generally very lovely people, want to build affordable housing, and I think they mean that in good faith. I really do, and so they see. I think their visions for housing are maybe a little bit different than mine, but I think we can agree on a lot of things. They're they're interested in building densely on Los Gatos Boulevard. Mm. I'm interested in doing the exact same thing. I think Kylie's interested in doing the exact same thing. And so I don't think, I think there is a lot of agreement on this because we all realize we have to get it done somehow. And then to answer your question about, is it possible? It, it depends. Like actually getting the 2,000 housing units built in eight years, I do not think is possible. And I don't think most planners would claim that it is. Maybe I'm wrong, mm. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think that was one of my arguments surrounding the housing numbers was just saying, all of this won't get built. And so we just need to create opportunities for mm -hmm. building. And I think that that's something we've been doing. But I would say the reason for our idealism, like you were saying, is largely that all of the young people, for the most part, feel this way. And so we know that together this can happen and maybe it'll take longer than it would, but we are going to end up as the majority of the community and as leaders. And I think that'll be beautiful. And it's out of necessity. We want yeah. to buy a home here one day. And right now we can't. Yeah. And that's, uh, and I think that's unfortunate. And, and it's, you know, maybe perhaps a little selfish, but I think it's true for, anyone who doesn't have millions of dollars of family money right and so there's there's lots of people mm -hmm. like that. do you feel like you have support building for your um for your ideas and your dreams and how i mean just even when it, it's even bigger than los gatos i mean do you feel like there is yeah i think so i think a big part of it is conversations like this i think yeah. that is a form of support just talking about it and alleviating some fears and revealing some problems that we need to work through and breaking down what it actually looks like. One, mm -hmm. one thing that Kylie and I did at my campaign launch was took people through our home and said, this is what a fourplex looks like. There's a lot of people who talk about hating uh, or, or not being in favor of denser housing, not being in favor of like missing middle housing and these sorts of things. And when you show people what this is, what this can look like, it's really beautiful. And, and what's really nice, I think about what, what our neighborhood looks like is we live on a, on a street of many fourplexes and we know all of our neighbors very well. We have a neighbor, we talk about this all the time. We have a neighbor who comes by every day and she has this dog that won't get off of our lawn. And we love hanging out with the dog and it's just the, a lovely little thing it's because it's a neighborhood. And, and I think I, I grew up in East Los Gatos in, in the Bellwood neighborhood where there's lots of big oh. single family homes. And when I was growing up, up there there were block parties and we all knew each other and all of those things but that neighborhood has gotten a lot older and a lot less affordable and there's a lot less young people there and so there's less kids on the swim team and less block parties and more you know just people staying in their homes and and I think living in a you know mixed income mixed housing type neighborhood is really awesome we we live we live near young people we uh our neighbor has a, a young daughter who we love hanging out with and, and just seeing and all of those things and and uh and i think it also so yeah. you're not suffering uh and wallowing in this yeah. medium density neighborhood no, no not at you're benefit. not wishing that you could yeah. uh, uh, somehow be released from this hellish scape of yeah. uh yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good. I, I got to get Kylie out of here. Yeah. Uh, she has another appointment to get to. But I have just one more quick question left. It, 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 are, do you have specific opponents? Are there specific opponents to uh, growth and housing and, 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 and affordable housing? And I, I want names. 
Oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. I think that. Well, this is what I'm asking because yeah. I thought I, when you say the community, the Los Gatos Community Alliance and you uh, have similar goals, I thought, okay, well, I would have thought that they might be one of the opponents, but they're not. And we've got Lee Fago here from um, Democracy Tent. We'll hear from him in a second. But yeah. who are the opponents? Is it just a general sort of feeling that people don't want growth? And, and is there, but is there fear mongering going on? Is somebody selling fear? I think that first, like Rob said, there's no specific person and maybe there are people who we need additional conversations with, but I definitely don't see anyone as an opponent. I would say fear is our biggest opponent. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of fear. And I think you nailed it when you said breaking it down. Some people just hear, again, the word mm -hmm. affordable housing or growth and you think, oh no, the world is over in Los Gatos as mm -hmm. we know it, you know, and so yeah. it is just... So I want to say uh, to our viewers, if you have comments, I'm pointing at a camera. <laughs> Kylie's looking over like, it's an empty studio. Uh, first of all, I apologize for the air conditioning not working. I know, we, didn't, we, uh, we didn't address we're that. All, yeah. We're all completely glistening here, and I, I really appreciate you guys working through it. Oh, yeah. but, uh, but leave your comments in, leave your comments below. We'd like to hear those. We'd like to get people involved. And before I let you go, if somebody's listening, is anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, wh wh where can they go to get more information or get involved? Wh where, where, where are the resources that they could uh, to to access? Mm -hmm. So there's an engaged Los Gatos housing element website, and I think that's a really great. Slow resource. that down. <laughs> yes, of course. Engage Los Gatos. And is it called engagelosgatos.com? And or? I'm wondering if it's dash housing element or not. Okay, we'll try. We'll, we'll get it. We'll put it. In the, we'll put it in the uh, yeah. in, in the comments below. Yeah, we'll yeah. get that up there, and so so that we can do that. Rob, is there some place you'd like people to go? And I would recommend West Valley Community Services. I think West Valley Community Services is an excellent resource, and they Kylie has written uh, several articles debunking myths about affordable housing, debunking debunking myths about homelessness, which is a whole other issue. But there's there's lots of I, I think that there's a lot of resources out there and I think read them and 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 come to something like democracy tent so we can talk about these sorts yeah. of things uh, Rob you're running for council in uh, this year this year November yep. and uh, the other thing we just want to encourage everybody to do is just get involved in the conversation yep. it, it's it's heartbreaking how few people show up and talk about these things at a, at a at a town level and so that's the whole point of being here at podcasts is to get people a little bit more involved in the conversation maybe up the education level and awareness level of of the issues and i cannot thank you guys both enough for being yeah, here that was great um, you guys. i'm pretty thank close you. to being on on mark i'm a little, about three minutes over not bad okay <laughs> not bad Are you, yeah, you all right yeah. we're gonna take a little break we'll be right back thank, thank you both you. Come together right now, hit the ground running, ain't even a discussion, hold up. Come together right now, ain't no time for sleep, all we gotta do is come together.